So this is a post commentary for Jordan and Curtis's wedding. And this is a special one because it was a same day edit, which means that we shot, you know, dumped the footage and then had to edit this three minute all within the day of the wedding and then show it on a projector during the reception. So it was a little higher stress, you know, a different style of edit but I think it turned out really well. I had a lot of fun shooting it. So this post commentary is gonna show you kind of the behind the scenes and the thoughts that went into uh, making this edit and shooting the day. So let's just start off here. So this is the beginning of the day. I usually like to start by introducing the bride. and all of her friends, just to start off the tone of the day. Okay, so that's 25 seconds, and I usually like to do this. Um, for most of my films, like my six minutes, I usually start with, you know, I always do this kind of 25, 30 second intro here, but I didn't start with any dialogue because we didn't have that, most, that much for the day. And when you're trying to edit a same day edit, you really don't have any time to work with the dialogue. Um, a lot of same day edits are more of the music video type, uh, especially if you're running low on time. Um, but uh, yeah, we just start with a, a song and some nice, as you can see, you know, noise from the, the salon. So as you'll notice, I have the 2.35 aspect ratio. So this is like, you know, a pretty standard, I think I actually, here, let's just get, let's just pull this up. And I do a, uh, a uh, artificial move here. So this clip by itself is static, but as you can see, I use the aspect ratio to hide the fact that I actually am moving this with keyframes. So we'll put that back and you'll notice it now. It's just a tiny little subtle bit of movement and it makes a difference, you know? Uh, so to start off that day, let's just go down. Um, I'll show you what clips we had as options. So this was Tyler. So this was my uh, second shooter. And uh, here he is right here. So I had three people, including myself. So we had Tyler as the second and then Thomas here as the third. Um, so we had a good crew. And of course, Tyler's throwing some gang signs during the ceremony, always. Um, so he shot me a couple different shots, a wide, but it's not really usable because I'm going into the building at that point. This kind of down, but it's actually not that good of an A to B. It's kind of like A to B, and then he goes left to C. So it's not very smooth. I like A to B when it's a single shot like that. Same thing, he's just repeating it, trying to get it smoother. And then he kind of moved in and punched in and then did the same move to the sign and then did it again. I guess it's smoother. And then he did a zoom out, which I would probably never use a zoom out. So he gave me a couple options there. I ended up using the end of this clip because it's kind of static and then I just did my own smooth, subtle movement. So I'd say the best kind of shot that would have been out of these six shots here, you know, he had some time because I was inside, so he had plenty of time to shoot these six shots, but I just needed one or two shots, a static wide, and then some kind of subtle movement. Exactly like, you know, a move kind of like this probably would have been best. And that's what I ended up using. So real quick, let's just check out uh, what we're doing with color here. So I moved the midtones to warm up a little bit and I adjusted the exposure a tiny bit. So for this wedding, we were shooting pretty standard. We had the, the sharpness down a little bit, but the contrast and the saturation and the color tone uh, was pretty standard as far as the picture profile for Canon DSLRs. We were shooting with two, two 6Ds and a T3i. And uh, yeah, so let's just turn that on and off to show you what I kind of did to fix up that color a little bit. So I raised the mids and the highs a little bit just to fix that exposure and then I warmed it up a little bit. It kind of looks a little green, but I thought that was better than the second shot. 
So these are the interior shots that I, I, I went inside and shot with a monopod. So getting details to lead into the bride. The first person that I show is the bride. I want everyone to know that she's the most important. We're focusing on her. And the thing about the morning is you have to be very careful because when she's getting her makeup on, you necessarily don't want to show uh, the beginning stages of that process. So you can kind of get away with that by doing rack focuses to hide half the frame and out of blur blurriness. And then kind of shoot from the side and then use like the artist's hands like as obstructions there. And you know, you can shoot her hands, her rings, the details to lead into that moment. It's really like the last five minutes of uh, the salon, if you ever shoot at a salon, that you're going to use while she's getting her makeup done. And I love getting these laughs, the little inside jokes here. So they were replaying really funny uh, voicemails. I like that, you know, it's just the emotion trumps everything. So if you get people smiling and happy right here, that's the best. Just get that little moment. So this was shooting into a mirror. Always use that, it's always a good, it just makes that super bokeh right here. <laughs> just more smiling faces, couple details, getting towards the end of the makeup. See, this is a little repetitive. I'm kind of doing the same thing here, just with different angles, which is okay, but there wasn't that much going on there. So this is the 25 seconds I have for the intro. Let's just look at the raw footage that I was working with for that. So in order, I shot this, because I was kind of, I always like to warm up and, and shoot from the outside, then move in when everyone feels a little comfortable to have me there. So I was kind of looking for these moments when they were, um, yeah. So you kind of just have to, this is like, this is like a 50 second long clip, almost a minute long clip where I'm really just looking for that moment where she's like smiling and happy. And that's the thing, you know, with these emotions, you have to find that right moment. So just keep rolling. They get used to you there and then they just do their thing. And this is a mess up. I use that clip. I use that clip. I use that. I use pretty much all of these clips. I would say this, this one I didn't use. So this was like a wide kind of move. It's a bit shaky with the monopod. Maybe that's why I didn't use it. Um, yeah. So those, I pretty much used all but one of the clips that I shot at that salon. I was very selective, you know, I had plenty of time and space, but I just got what, exactly what I needed and then I was out. And that's why it's almost good to shoot by yourself because if you're the only shooter there, you're getting exactly what you need and then you're out. You know, if I had a second shooter come in to shoot this stuff and the exteriors, you know, he would have to, he or she would, ha I would have to describe exactly what I was looking for and then that may not, you know, meet expectations. So it's tough sometimes, but at least I was able to get, you know, my second shooter to shoot the exteriors while I was inside. Okay, so we still are, are moving with this one song and we have this transition here. So I didn't mark it, but I usually mark these transitions in the song. So there's one right here and I can tell that there's one right here. Uh, so you use those transitions to move between different scenes. So like it's the easiest thing to look at it like an essay. It's a scene. It's a little paragraph. This is a paragraph made up with little sentences. This is a paragraph intro. Move it into the body. Okay. So just treat each situation as a beginning, middle and end. So here we go. Introduce where we're going next with a nice little rack focus from the foliage to the Stuff. And the thing is, that I've found is that exteriors are almost better with a longer lens from further away. A lot of people like to throw in a wide angle if they're going to do an exterior and then be pretty close. So like if you were standing right here on this bank shooting the wide angle of the building, I don't think that's as interesting as this was a hundred millimeter uh, from across. So on my camera, um, I first shot with this 35 and you'll see I underexpose because I'm outside. It's almost always better to underexpose, especially with a wide angle outside. The audio is unusable, but I gave myself a static. I gave myself a very subtle pan over. And then I punched in with the 100. I gave myself another static. And then I gave myself another pan. Just so I had those two really quick options with the same clip. And it only took like 10 seconds to shoot that. And then I was like, one more. Give me something crazy. So this is safe, this is good, and this is crazy. 
and I ended up using the more interesting shot. So I did some rack focuses, pans up, tilts up to uh, the location. And I thought the 100 looked better. You know, this, this shot would have looked cool with the, uh, um, the aspect ratio applied to it, um, but I ended up just using this because it was a cooler rack focus. And the entire time I was shooting with Magic Lantern on the 60s, so I had the, uh, the crops um, over so I knew what it would look like. So it's good to shoot the 1080p, but to like uh, frame it with the composition for uh, the ending product, which, yeah. So let's just take a look at what I did as far as the color for this shot. And you'll see a big exposure change and a little subtle, um, I warmed up the midtones again, and you'll notice that a lot. So let's just take a look at what those differences look like. So when you shoot outside and you underexpose, I found that a lot of times you really have to raise the highlights a lot. So that's a big change right there, and it looks way better. And then it looks a little warmer, as you can tell with that that midtone warm warmness. You know, I usually do that. Just just it's more fun. It's just more inviting when things are a little warmer than cooler. You know, it, it changes the mood of the viewer. Okay, so. I sent out uh, Tyler, my second shooter, to get some exterior shots and some atmosphere, just to kind of gauge, give a sense of where this wedding was. So I think he had like a good half an hour, 45 minutes to do so. Um, and that was again, you know, warming up that day. So he had plenty of time to uh, go do that. Oh, and when we first got there, I had him kind of do this slider shot of the shoes and he kind of underexposed quite a bit. You know, I tried to um, bring it back, but it was just too much to fix. So I, did, I left it out of the film. And there's also like these things on the windows, the little specks, the dirt, you know, and then I don't like the chairs in the background. There's just a lot wrong with this shot, but that's okay, you know. See, this is a little better. I can probably use this in the dock edit. Just a better frame, just because, you know, like I say, minimalism is better. I, I don't like that chair in the background competing for attention from the, the shoes, let alone with the exposure f problems, you know, but this is a better composition. Um, yeah. Okay, so he went outside and we have one, two, we have like a dozen clips here, so. Let's see, he kind of, you know, he was shooting some medium wide of just the area and kind of just like panning around. It seems very sporadic to me, not with like a thought in mind. There we go. Probably put on like, I think he had a 70 to 200 at this point. So he's getting the, the movement of the chairs. So this is a good shot. I wish this, these were the, uh, the groomsmen, because they were out here putting before and it would have been great to get some shots of them practicing, but we didn't have time to do that. So these are like pans, you know, I usually like an A to B, a lot of them, usually these are best static and just use rule of thirds, like this is pretty good. So I used this in the film, so this was the first shot that I did. And uh, I did, I raised the uh, the highlights as you can tell. A bit punch I punched the colors a little bit um, I th feel like the level was off a little bit with this shot and it's just like odd like what you end on is usually what the focus of the subject is and it's like this dirty pond river so it's like that shot didn't really work so well this was okay but I ended up not using it as you can tell like I, I put it into a timeline at one point so I'd say, you know, I really just needed two or three shots. Um, static probably would have been better for most of these. I probably would have used them. This one's okay. This is well exposed and it shows some good foliage that gives kind of a texture to the area. That's a good shot. I like that it was static, it was framed well. And then he gave me a second one, which was good, which is kind of just a movement into it. Um, you could probably shoot both of these on the same clip just to save time and effort. And then at this point he was looking for some, he asked this guy to hit a ball, which was his best shot. This was good. So um, I used this as my second shot here in the film. You're a man of many words. I think I did, let's just take a look at the color for this one real quick as well. 
So yeah, I raised, I uh, added a lot of contrast, so darkened the darks and then raised the highlights and I didn't do anything with the color. So by, by changing the contrast, it immediately just pulls out more of the color. Um, so I just used those two shots with this, establishing where we were. Cool. Man of many words. And I like that he got a sound with it too. Your man of many words. I just don't like this right here. <laughs> man of many words. So I hear how do you Excited. Okay, so this is introducing the groom. This is the first time we really got to hang out with him, so uh, he you know, I wanted to pull this kind of funny aspect out of him. So I hear how do you Yeah, so we're kind of making fun of the fact that, you know, he's he's excited to get married, but he's kind of a soft-spoken guy, so we kind of got these <laughs> wonderful, excited. <laughs> so I always love adding that little personal touch to, um, you know, the characters in the films, and I usually love to do that with some kind of typography or just something stupid like that. It's kind of like, I don't know, I love doing it. It's It always gets a positive reaction, so... And I needed to pull some audio anyway. So let's real quick go up and just take a look at um, the clips that I shot uh, around that moment, I guess, you know. And we have some other clips of him getting ready, but around this shot. So this was me shooting just what the guys were up to, where they were getting ready, you know, them putting their ties on, shoes on. I used this clip later on, you'll see. Uh, I think this is him talking, yeah. Once again, it's just a lot of, you know, seeing and listening and just really being ready for the moments before they happen. And it was like in this locker room, so there wasn't any natural light, so it was a little tough to shoot. And I got this one detail shot. I probably, I can't remember. Yeah, I do use this in the film, so that's good. So this is like on a monopod with a 70 to 200, yeah. No, with a 50, I had a 50. So I kept a 50 and 100 with me on a monopod just so I could jump around, just getting more interaction with the guys, him tying his tie, and then a close-up. So you'll see, so this is me getting a, a wide, still rolling just so I can keep that audio, and it's quicker if you don't cut. I got this detail, and then I tried to pull out some dialogue. I asked them a question. That's the only reason he's in the party. And then I got the subject of who it is. So a wide, a detail, and then a face. And then I kind of liked this better as the detail shot with a little dirty in the, in the side. I don't think I used this in the film, but that'll probably make the doc edit. No, I actually did. I used it. So let's just, let's, well, let's finish this real quick. Um, yeah. So, and then I, I moved away from that. So let's just continue with the film. So shots of three are usually good. So this is a mini story. This is the dress. And this is a moment in the song that changes and I wanted it to be like that big, you know, slider, amazing dress shot. Detail, detail. So this is wide establishing, detail, subject. You'll notice that a lot in my films. It'll be where we are, um, something about it and what it is. Not necessarily in that order, but you know. So let's just look at what I did to get those three shots. And I got exactly those three shots. So with the slider, I got the shot we used right here. Boom. I made sure to, you know, you make it with the frame. I uh, pulled back, I get made sure I had a pull back shot. And then I uh, did one more, one more crazy which was a push in and a slide up. Cause I knew I got both of those shots. Why not do something that's different? Just so my editor, which who is me, had some options. Okay. And I did it in the quickest, most efficient way possible. So this is with a tripod and a, a 100 millimeter pan up from the detail of the dress to the name, which is good. And then one more option top down from the bow to the name. I probably could have used that actually. You know, either of those shots would have worked, but at least I had options. And then this was just a macro, 100 macro, 
uh, pan up with the close up of the detail of the dress. So this is something that many not people usually don't put in, but it's a great detail. I love the closeness of the dress because most people don't get to see the dress this close up and they pay good money to have a dress like that. So why not? All right, let's continue with the film. Well, real quick, let me show you color for this shot because with most uh, macros, oh, wow, all right. I guess I didn't do any color, I'm surprised. There was enough uh, available light there and I exposed that pretty well. Usually I have to up the highlights. Okay, so here I'm going back and forth between them getting their final touches and getting ready. I like this detail shot with the shoe, you know, I shot that with them and I showed you that. So this is the, another locker room for the girls where they're getting ready. So let me show you the raw footage for those moments right there. Um, so yeah, once again, just rolling and then moving around. I got those two shots within the same clip. So I was moving around with the 100 macro. Yeah, 100 millimeter on a monopod. Getting the dresses, getting faces. It's all about uh, action, reaction, action, reaction. So it's like, she's zipping up the dress. I get her action, her reaction, and then I get the action. So if I got zipping up and then her finishing, that would have been fine. But it's like the back and forth, you know, it's, it's the best way to tell that story. So this doesn't really make sense to me. This is like a failure on my part as far as placement. It's like the same thing twice, but two different angles. It's not really moving the story forward in any way. So she's smiling and then we cut to her at a different, it's kind of jarring. Like this is a weird uh, two clips to have in a row. So it came down to, you know, time or I don't know what I was doing at that point. Like I even could have separated it with this Jordan and Curtis moment right here, this detail. So this was shot by Thomas upstairs while I was doing this and uh, has a little bit of color correction. So I upped the contrast. So just between cameras sometimes, you know, you don't get the same look. So that's what we started with. Pretty flat and uh, not saturated look. And I kind of added the contrast and in doing so added more color. Okay, so we're getting ready. Details, subjects, and reactions. And for every, you know, moment you're shooting the bride or groom, you're really looking for what I call like the hero shot. So it's like just a very grand, beautiful shot that really shows, you know, the face and that just the person in the best light possible. So like with the beat in this song, I give her this hero shot right here. So she's like about to get married and she's so excited. So this is an interesting thing that I did. So, you know, she's getting ready and we've got all that. But at this moment, I actually asked uh, her to like, just have a little moment with each of her bridesmaids and then just kept rolling. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, <laughs> just kind of allowed her to have these little moments that I could kind of jump cut. This is like the one instance where jump cuts work. kind of want them to be a little bit different but those like little genuine reactions are so nice okay so this is the shot that Tyler Tyler captured right uh, here I believe so this is like a little behind the scenes of him actually getting that with a 6d with a 70 to 200 outside and he had a nice little static shot and then just let the action play out because you don't necessarily have to do any movement yourself uh, with the camera if there's movement within the frame. So the movement is her finishing and then leaving the frame. So like her just tying it wouldn't have been as interesting as her finishing and then leaving. So it's like the A to B, A to B. So that's usually what I'm looking for, A to B, A to B, some kind of movement within the frame. 
uh, within the clip that just propels something forward. So A to B, the story. Okay, so this is a little mini story. We have a detail, the drinks. We have a hero shot for the groom. So now we have the hero shot for the bride and we have the hero shot uh, for the groom. And the thing about these shots, I think uh, Thomas, my third, shot them. Um, and I had a balance color. So um, I let Final Cut do the auto balance and it. I actually liked the look that it gave me. So it warmed it up a bit and I think it added a tiny bit of contrast. So that's a big, you know, that's a good difference right there as far as the color correction. So I set this shot up. So I had Thomas shoot tight and his focus was a little, you know, late. He really should have been focused on that because you can tell it's like a quick focus to try to get to it, like a mess up. It wasn't stylized. And then I was shooting this wide. So I had this locked down even though we're moving. So once again, you'll see this little trick I did with the aspect ratio, a uh, keyframe pan. It's a, a translation, I think you call it. So I add that artificial movement, just that slight little subtle move. This is like my Wes Anderson shot. Um, so for those clips, we had her out there doing some portraits with the photographer. Um, we shot all of these clips. I was kind of moving around doing different stuff, shooting BTS actually, like I usually do. <laughs> and then kind of getting a couple clips for the doc edit of uh, them doing this. So there, as you can see, it underexposed. And I brought up the highlights a little bit in the final video. Yep, all right. Okay, so now we're moving towards the ceremony and we need to set that up. So these are like establishing shots for the ceremony. People getting excited, moving towards the bride coming. Okay. So, for these shots, um, I just had those guys, you know, we went over the game plan for the ceremony. That's what was most important. I wanted them to be ready for when that happened. And then any of these clips of people arriving, sitting down, and like introducing the ceremony happening, we're just like, you know, icing on the cake. We don't necessarily need them but they're, they're always good to have. That got in my way. So these are shots that I shot. So uh, them getting ready, the groom, more BTS. Always, so when you're shooting ceremony, the closer they are to the bride and groom up front, you know, the more important the people are. So always shoot the parents in the first row if you have to shoot anything. Um, always try to get them because it's usually parents and immediate family up there so that's important all right so let's let's check out the color correction on this because i think there's some stuff here just a little bit of balance auto balance color which final cut sometimes does a good job of so i let it i always like to get people looking back and people standing up because it's like an introduction to the bride coming because it's a little bit jarring when you just have people sitting and then she comes it's like oh no what's coming it creates this shot to be it sets it up to be more important when you have like <laughs> it's almost like tension yeah you're building tension you're introducing what's about to come it's like what's coming oh no something's coming this boom and it's about action reaction so this is happening. This is his reaction to that thing happening. And the more emotion you can pull out of these reactions, the better. So shooting with a 70 to 200 at this moment, and this shot is one of the most important of the day. Time to celebrate the okay, so this audio I clipped a little bit. So I put a Zoom H1 with a Countryman B3 on the officiant just because it was a little windy and I couldn't depend on the recorded sound that he was using with his mic for the speakers for the ceremony. So 
I set the input a little too high and I tried to restore it as much as possible, but this is really the best I can do with the audio. We have gathered here at this time to celebrate the coming together of two separate lives. We have come to witness. Okay, so you can see I'm over here on a tri tripod with a 70 to 200 on a 6D. My second Tyler is over here with the same setup. So it's a 70, whoops, it's a 70 to 200. Uh, on a tripod and then in the back getting this shot is uh, Thomas with his T3i uh, with a wide angle getting this establishing shot. And uh, from my angle for when the ceremony started, which is right here, you'll see I, I oh, right here, I recorded long takes because it's easier to sync in post. I just had a 70 to 200 on a monopod rocking that the whole time. I could walk around because I had a little time. I had my second and third in place, staying put, so I could get her arriving and then walking down the aisle. And then I brought my camera over to that position. And then this is pretty much where I shot my angle for the uh, ceremony. And then I told them to make sure that they got the kiss down the aisle and from the side so I could swing my camera around to get the uh, audience clapping and reaction. And then I went to the back right before they walked out to get them coming down the aisle on a monopod, still with that 70 to 200, so. Cool. So, the ceremony. Great the coming together of two separate lives. We have come to witness the joining of this man, Curtis, and this woman, Jordan, in marriage, and to celebrate with them the love they have discovered in each other and to support them in the making of this important and everlasting commitment. So that was the best sound bite I got out of the ceremony. And then I just kind of filled it in with the, a diverse set. So a detail, establishing detail, subject, just another different angle of that wide. And then kind of went back and forth one more time. And I know the, the dialogue doesn't line up, but that's okay, you know. Just kind of that little laugh is good, emotion. This is the last different shot that we have from the middle. I think I might have played with this a little bit. So I added a sharpen, and then I did this color correction. So the T3i was a bit, you know, we tried to match up the picture profile as much as possible but I had to do a lot of work because I think he overexposed the image a little bit which it's better to underexpose than overexpose so that's why it looks a little over like crush it's like the blacks are being crushed the contrast is a little off but yeah and I think that's it for this shot I think one of these wides I did something weird so I had to apply that color correction to all of them. Was it this one? I added sharpen. No, I thought I did some kind of scaling, but no. It was just the contrast that I fixed for those. So we have the kiss from that angle, we have a reaction, and then we have the, the wider shot from the back. Okay, and right here, notice the song. This important and everlasting commitment. So I artificially added that moment just because I needed it at the song right there. Important and everlasting commitment. So as you could see, you know, you watched in the raw footage, I got both of these shots from the same clip, just cause I don't need 20 seconds of this. I can get enough, which is three to four seconds and then get some kind of cutaway, which is a detail uh, with the hands, you know? Why not get two shots when I could get one? Or get two shots when instead of one. Okay. So we move into the reception part of the day and uh, we're two minutes into the film, over two minutes. So it's starting to wrap up. Um, three minutes is where I was trying to hit. Um, so the song changes again right here. 
So that's not what is supposed to happen. So if we look at the song, this is what naturally happens with the song. So I didn't like that. So it takes a lot more time to like change the song like this, but I wanted to switch to this part of the song because it naturally ends right here and I wanted the song to naturally end at the end of the film at three minutes instead of just fading it out. So so we got some details. Let's see if we did anything with the color here. We did. All right, so there is this auto white balance and then there is this. So all together with both of the effects this is what it was originally shot this is what i changed to so i just added a little bit of contrast it seems i think this has some stuff on it a tiny bit hmm. that's very contrasting so it's good to get that you know both of them they're finally married now shot this would have been better with uh, lit candles, but my third shooter, Thomas, did a pretty good job with these slide shots, so it worked out fine. You know, obviously the lit candles would have been better, but it's okay. Because if these candles were lit, the candles in the background would have been lit and they would have been like bokeh and it would have been awesome. Cool. So this hit in the song you want to change and like I would have added uh, the audio Maybe that would have helped but I didn't have much time because it was the same day edit So I had a second angle from like oh, right over here with uh, Tyler shooting this way so I just didn't put it in the film I didn't have time to sh put in the speeches, so I just kind of put the best reaction shot. Cake. Always have two angles of the cake, it's always good. There's two angles of the dancing, so the, the master wide just to always have. And then this close up gets more of the, the shots. This is the shot that we need. And then these are the shots that we want. We don't necessarily have to have these, but they're good to have. So a detail, a hero shot, another subject. Yeah. So it's like A to B. So it's like A to B, A to B. Always end with them. So I end with their name, and then show my title card, music fades. Cool. And that's it, you know. I could show you more the the um more of the raw footage, but that's really just to help with the doc edit, you know. In the time that I was given I got as much done as I could. And uh this is me doing the same day edit, you know, I had this little corner. I was editing off of that uh, Thunderbolt uh, RAID hard drive here on my MacBook Pro. I made sure that I could communicate with my shooters while they were out shooting with via text. Um, they would dump the footage and then, you know, I just kind of did my thing. And uh, we ended with Tyler acting a fool, so I'll leave you on that note. But I hope this was a very helpful in some way. Um, make sure to check the links below to watch the full film in its entirety. Um, but let me know if you have any questions, but until then, thank you for watching and see you.